other members um, from different countries so that we can just stretch this a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, because I think it's a good thing that we also have been present. So welcome and thank you for coming. It's a bit short notice I gave them. Um, but anyway, so uh, I think we need to start because of the time. So thank you so much, everybody that's here. Um, uh, welcome, Lloyd. Thank you very much. And uh, the purpose of today is Lloyd is going to introduce a project that he's working on. It's called the T Initiative. And he's also busy with another project. So I think he will, um, I did send him a message to say just to summarize so that we've got the background. What, uh, Lloyd, what we would like to know with your presentation is how do you see Global Peace Let's Talks um, part, partnership in this? What are the expectations and what are the benefits to us uh, for joining up with you on the project? So, so I, I was just explaining sort of my ambassadorship, and so I, I have this this um, relationship with the Five Points Youth Foundation. So the mandate of the Five Points Youth Foundation Ad Hoc International Advisory Board of Goodwill Ambassadors is to implement what we call this program of globalization of the global goals. So globalization means um, thinking globally, acting locally. Uh, so globalize. Um, make something that uh, make things that are relevant to the local culture essentially um, so a big corporation might localize something like mcdonald's going to korea and making a bulgogu burger uh, or something like that that's a localization um, so localizing means like looking uh, looking through the lens of the local culture uh, and adapting um, the good or service provided, and so this is the this is the concept. We want to localize the delivery of the solutions to achieving those sustainable development goals. So those SDGs, uh, what, we, what we call the global goals, and so we have this specific process <laughs> that we've developed, that is, the ad hoc international advisory board's process of localization. So we've developed this over the last two years essentially from a little bit before the pandemic started in 2020, um, early 2020, uh, so the COVID-19 pandemic came along, but we had already been working on some of this stuff um, in late 2019, uh, but it really accelerated through 2020, 2021. Uh, now we're in early 2022, we're starting to implement uh, the everything we've been kind of talking about. Uh, we want to actually take action on these things. So the T Diplomacy Initiative is one of the, uh, basically we call them community engagement processes. So we have a number of different community engagement processes that we developed over these years, these last two years. Uh, so it starts with what we call the tree, of, the planting of the tree of peace and reconciliation. Um, in a local community as a focal point to bring the community together to support what we call humanitarian entrepreneurs. So it's so a humanitarian entrepreneur is basically a social entrepreneur who is implementing those solutions to achieving the global goals, those SDGs, through their business. So they're taking they taking the SDGs as a lens through which they're they're establishing their business. So our, my role uh, and the role of the Ad Hoc International Advisory Board is to develop this global unity network of social entrepreneurs, these humanitarian entrepreneurs, who we want to teach, we want to educate them about, about humanitarian entrepreneurship, social entrepreneurship in the, looking at, through the lens of the SDGs. And we're starting in the least developed countries, communities, and economies, as we call them. Um, so these least developed countries in Africa or wherever they are, um, within in my portfolio is the Commonwealth countries, the Francophonie countries, and Turtle Island communities, uh, meaning here in North America, and saying what are the most marginalized communities that where we want to teach people 
uh, these things. So we have this in community engagement process. The T Diplomacy Initiative is one of the community engagement processes uh, that we have. So as we develop this global network, so we've been developing the global, this global unity network as we call it, um, we're doing it right now on uh, social media. So we're using Facebook, we're using WhatsApp, we're using LinkedIn, uh, mostly social media sites. We built these groups, these communities of people with, with certain interests. Um, eventually, so we have a sort of an agreement with the company in California uh, that it was introduced to us by uh, the Five Points Youth Foundation leaders. Uh, so Andrew Williams Jr., who's the president there, connected us with a gentleman who has a virtual reality platform. So everybody's probably heard of um, the, the sort of the metaverse, like Facebook changed their name to Meta. Um, so this whole idea of the metaverse is this virtual reality world. It's like the next stage of the internet, the next stage of social media and everything, and the next stage of business as well. So there's a business platform that we, we want to use. And we want to eventually bring everybody in our network onto this platform. Uh, as a sort of a, what's called a virtual private network, where we can have people interacting um, within this metaverse environment um, to do to actually do business because this is a business venture. Uh, the idea is we want to empower these social entrepreneurs. We're going to educate these marginalized people to become entrepreneurs, to run their local community social business in their community. We're gonna educate them about how to, how to run a business, uh, specifically looking at food as sort of the lens through which we're gonna educate people uh, and especially youth and children as, uh, as part of the, the early learning programs that are being developed through our, our uh, learning network. So my colleague, Stephanie is, is managing this learning network uh, to, to develop the education and training programs working with a bunch of other partners. And then we wanna deliver those education and training programs through this virtual collaborative network, which has a facility to allow for the remote delivery of learning program, programs, education and training. So we can start delivering education and training to these entrepreneurs virtually. So we don't have to go into these communities to, to deliver our programs. Basically everything's done virtually. Um, and then we can, and then these spaces, these virtual spaces, are also trade spaces for the entrepreneurs to actually do their business. <laughs> so the idea is that what we want to do is we're building this network right now. Um, we have the, this engagement process, the community engagement process at the local level. We build a, we basically are our, our um, program, uh, the, the idea for the program that we're creating, this, this uh, what we call um, this process of globalization of the global goals is to help create support networks at the local community level. So we call, we call we're looking at, at SDG 17, which is partnerships for the goals. So SDG 17 partnerships, we have a partnership template with seven sectors of partners that we wanna to bring together at the local level in every local community through the, this engagement that allows us to create a local support network for those entrepreneurs that we're going to train so that every local community has uh, a, a support network that, that supports those um, entrepreneurs in the local community. So for instance, one of the partners would be the government, like the local government. So your, your town council, your, your, your uh, uh, mayor and council. So that's a partner of the partner at the local level. So we would, we would develop that local partnership that would, uh, that would say, look, we want you as a city or a community or a village or whatever it is, um, uh, a town to support these entrepreneurs. How do you support them? Well, encourage your employees of your 
community to shop at the, that entrepreneur's venue, like to buy the goods and services that they're delivering. So we would build this partnership to support basically uh, their business to make sure that they are they can uh, thrive as a local community business. And so this is this is part of what we do. Is the Tea Diplomacy Initiative is one of the ways of um, developing both the local network, but we're also what we're doing is developing a global network on this virtual collaborative platform of local communities. So it's basically a a um, if you think of if you think of sort of um, in Canada, there's an organization called the uh, uh, I'm just trying to think of the name right now, but the the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. So this Federation of Canadian Municipalities is all the local governments in Canada came together to create a national organization of every local community in the country. So every, every single local community, and there's like in Ontario, it's a big country, right? Ontario alone, we have 444 municipalities in this province alone. This is one of all the provinces. Um, so there's 444 members of this organization in my province alone. So there are thousands of these local municipalities across Canada. And so this is the idea is create a global network of local communities, but we're not bringing in them, we're not establishing them as municipalities or we're not working with governments directly. What we do is create these local support organizations. So the support organizations become the members of this network. So we have, for instance, here in Toronto area, uh, what we call the Unity Network of Greater Toronto Area. So Unity Net GTA is for short. And they're the support network for our local humanitarian entrepreneurs. They would become so Unity Net GTA becomes a member of this global network of these Unity Net support networks. And so the T Diplomacy Initiative is a way for us to communicate between those local community organizations. Um, so the idea is, uh, the way I explained it, like I have this Indigenous Global Unity Summit event. I do this every Thursday. And I believe Nikki has attended um, those events. And the way I explain the T Diplomacy Initiative is um, what we want to do because we are focused on food, uh, sort of food security and food businesses as sort of the entry point uh, for um, this learning programs, the entrepreneurship learning programs. Uh, I, did, I explained the Tea Diplomacy Initiative as connecting local farmers, growers, and entrepreneurs across geographies and among members of communities that may not otherwise ever get a chance to talk to each other and get to know each other as people. Um, so somebody in, for instance, Kenya, who has never talked to somebody in Pakistan, who has never talked to somebody in Indonesia, who has never talked to somebody in Mexico, we can connect those people to actually have a conversation, sit down, like I, like I sort of explain it, like I have my cup of tea and just have a casual conversation and get to know each other as people as this way of sort of casually just having conversations um, so we can, we can connect as human beings and, and sort of break down some of these barriers um, to understanding each other. I, I'm, I'm from Toronto and I think we're in a unique situation here because uh, we, have a, we have a country that's very, that's so, uh, I mean, I think England as well, uh, in, in a way, uh, probably London is, is very much like Toronto in some ways, in that there's such a, such a diversity of people from all over the world. I think Dubai and places like that as well. Um, are like that, where people uh, interact with all the different races, religions, cultures, everything that's there, right? Uh, but not, certainly not every place in the world is like that. Uh, and it, it, some are, are very like, um, not, uh, pe the people are not sort of uh, acclimatized and accustomed to 
meeting other people and, and it, it doesn't um, sort of work well uh, to, for, for people. I, I actually lived for a while in Taiwan as an example. Um, and I was working in Korea and, and uh, Asia. And I found a, like strikingly, like everybody is basically Chinese. There is no diversity really. Uh, or in South Korea, everybody is, is South Korean, um, except for a few expats, which are like very rare. Um, but in Trump, like a city like Toronto, and I think in London, uh, obviously, um, like I live in a building, I'm in a condo, um, and most of the people are either Chinese or Persian. Interestingly enough, the Chinese and the Persians live together here in this building, um, and uh, and or 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 like myself, uh, um, European, uh, but we just all live together and it's just sort of normal um and what we'd like to do is is use this tea diplomacy initiative um to engage people in these conversations virtually basically using like zoom like what we're using now um to have this sort of casual conversations uh, so the way i describe it during the igu summit is the idea is to sit down even if only virtually have tea relax and Basically, the idea is to discuss local solutions to global problems like food security, like hunger, like climate change, like environmental um, issues, like peace and security and the well being of people um, in those local communities, wherever they're living. So, this globalization idea. So, we're talking about solutions to achieving the global goals. So, what are those solutions at the local level? Let's have a conversation. Let's just sort of sit down, have relax, and say, what are the what are the, some of the things you think are necessary to be done to make think your life better, or to make life better for the people in your community who are marginalized? Are there homeless people in your community? How can we help them? Um, are there refugees? Are there are there hunger issues? Are there homeless like whatever are the issues in the local community? Um, so I describe it as well as the people participating would also discuss as well what kind of teas they like to drink. So sort of trying to break down the, the, the cultural barriers um, and also what unique teas they grow in their own local communities or region, if any. Right? Um, so we're, we're mostly looking at, at a lot of the, the um, because we're looking at a lot of uh, communities that are, that are um, sort of remote, um, especially in Africa. Uh, we, most of the members of our network now are, are farmers, growers, or other people who are in these marginalized communities. They may not be farmers or growers of food now, but they may have an interest in that. Uh, so we're, we're connecting to a lot of these, these women farmer networks as an example. Um, and then discuss as well, the importance of the teas Hello, to Lloyd. their local cultures. Yeah. Sorry, I've, uh, we've scheduled the Zoom for 30 minutes for you, and then mm -hmm. a question, and then a question time for the people here. So, um, yeah. So, if you could maybe just round off and see if there's any questions. Yeah, no, so that's, people that, can that's understand. Basically... That's yeah. basically what it is, right? That, that uh, sort of the the sort of the last bit, like I mentioned there, is sort of sit down, have tea virtually, discuss uh, things in the community that there that there there may be some issues. What could be some of the solutions? Um, but have this conversation, um, and especially talk about as well the food. And, and the teas, right? Because um, we are focused, we're using the lens of food. Uh, part of the reason we're using the lens of food is because um, it's universal. Everybody eats, everybody drinks. Uh, and tea is one of the biggest things in the world. Uh, it's, I think it's, it's number two beverage in the world. Number one, water. Number two, tea, right? It's, it's universal. Everybody drinks tea, right? Whether it's herbal tea, or black tea or some other kind of teas. Everybody knows what it is. Um, so it's a uni universal attribute of humanity. 
is we drink tea. Uh, so we want to use we're using that as a lens for having conversations around the cultural aspects as well of the teas that may be grown or that they that people drink um, and why it's important to them personally or culturally. Um, and just what we want to do is break down the barriers for for communications between uh, different cultures that, as I, as I said at the beginning, have maybe never had a chance to talk to each other. Um, and it ties in a little bit with, with what we call the Abraham Project, which is an attempt through the tree planting initiative to bring together uh, different people, different faiths, uh, different faith communities, um, where we, we want to actually bring together Christians and Muslims in particular at every tree planting we do um, in, in an effort to, to have interfaith collaboration for the implementation. Once we're, we're into the implementation phase of the solutions, we want the interfaith organizations um, to help support those entrepreneurs locally as well. And that's, so it's not just about Christian, Christians or not just about Muslims or not just about whatever the, the local religions might be, but to bring all of those re local religion, uh, faith communities together um, to support the entrepreneurs and, and have those dialogues as well. So I'll, I'll end it there and if there's any questions. Hello, Lloyd, um, it's Manago. Thank you for that, really informative. I just would like to pick up on the conversations that you've been having thus far. Is there any particular conversation that you or your team have picked up and acted upon and the reaction or the stats towards that? Like, you know, if you picked up on a conversation that needed to be addressed in your tea diplomacy, then how did you act upon it and what are the results, if I may? I don't well, know if I sound clear. Yeah, well, I, well what I, I also need to make clear is that we have not done it yet, any of this oh. yet. This, yeah. So okay. this is still just a concept. As I said, it, about two years ago, we started this whole initiative. So there's a number of community engagement um, ideas we have. So I've had this concept of the Tea Diplomacy Initiative for probably five or six months. I recently connected with Nikki and we recently just had these few conversations. I've been promoting this idea through our Indigenous Global Unity Summit events. Actually, not even just from the beginning. We're, we're, we're now in week 30, 38 is coming up. So we've been doing 38 weeks of these IGU summits every Thursday morning. Um, and so probably around week, I don't know, week like that, I introduced this tea diplomacy initiative into the into my presentation. Um, and then Nikki said, look, this, this seems really interesting. Let's have a conversation because we haven't done it before. So it's all new. So actually it's an opportunity I think for global peace, let's talk to 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 wrap up there this and become, make your own even. Um, just take some of these concepts because the idea is we we as the network. Uh, so I'm an, I'm basically in the network manager. We're promoting these concepts, these ideas, but we don't own them. They're sort of open source. This is so we'd love somebody to do this kind of thing. Right? Um, the only thing we kind of own, I guess, uh, the Ad Hoc International Advisory Board uh, of Goodwill Ambassadors is this tree planting, the Tree of Peace and Reconciliation. That's ours, but we're not even going to do it ourselves. We're going to, we're, we're talking with another organization in Germany that said we're interested in possibly doing this, um, like creating an NGO to deliver this. Uh, and so they would possibly be the one. And so they're already working in Africa. We're talking about establishing an NGO in Canada so they can deliver it in Canada. And then they would deliver it in, in uh, Africa where they already have a network. They're already doing work. Um, so they would just become sort of the, the tip of the spear that would deliver the, or to help 
the local communities because it's actually not the organization doing it it's that interfaith neighborhood and business collaborative as we call it um, that we're creating the local support network that they're actually the people in the local support network that actually do the tree plantings um, and would participate in the tea diplomacy initiative we just need a host essentially to in to be there to invite our members and others outside our network to join our network as well because we, we want to build the network obviously um, so we need this community engagement process that's not just at the local level but global and connects people and, and in, creates interest in in what we're doing hi lloyd how are you i'm good i'm good mm. I mean, after a long time, it is our second, and you are also in that, uh, you know, our, uh, Facebook. Now we are very familiar with all your activities. Uh, very good. So welcome again. Uh, now I, I was going through that uh, local, uh, your concept of local and as well as how it is linked with that uh, global aspect. And as uh, from this, uh, uh, GPLT, we are, uh, I'm looking up to the uh, rural development and environment aspects and, uh, and also uh, a bit on agriculture. So uh, ca can we plan something? I mean, one program as an initiative. So first program, how we can go ahead with well, that? Any team? Well, any this, team this, is that? Exactly, this is exactly why I want to have this meeting now. Um, yeah. So what is going on right now is that um, so we've been doing these IGU summit events, these Indigenous Global Unity Summit events, which is basically like this. It's a Zoom call. I do a presentation to start. It's actually a long presentation because I keep adding slides to it every week. It started out with something like a 30 minute uh, uh, slideshow that I kept adding one or two new slides every week. And then now we're in week 38 and then now it's more than an hour um, as an introduction to what we're doing. Uh, so I, I, I remove slides so it's or other otherwise it would probably be two hours but um, the, because we've been doing this we've been getting we've been getting interest uh, so in uh, basically what I am looking for that uh, let us plan at least one program as an initial stage uh, with GPLT yeah. and, and uh, your organization together uh, yeah, if well, you maybe uh, yeah as the issue you are talking about, I have gone through your uh, different uh, concept uh, and uh, sub theme about the unity uh, under the umbrella of unity. Even the uh, tea um, diplomacy, I am also part of that. Um, and uh, Mark from Canada, he also mentioned that you are taking the initiative. So on the climate change and other. Uh, what I'm trying to uh, mean you, uh, that day also uh, me, Nikki, uh, we, we are discussing with you and today also with the board. Um, let us start with one program. Any, any well, one program? This yeah. is exactly uh, what I'm trying to get to. Yeah. Get to you. Uh, well, fix, fix the date, uh, fix the event. Let us fix yes. some speaker from yes. both the end. And, yes. um, both, I'll, I'll, uh, I can both, explain that to you. Yeah. Right, so um, I was both, just about uh, to... Uh, few speakers from uh, GPLT side and few speakers from your end. And let us start with uh, this thing. And uh, then eventually with the passage of time, we'll work forward. Uh, but our in this forum particularly, because uh, sometimes it, be, uh, it, it may be diluted. Uh, in this forum, we uh, are uh, peace advocacy for peace, uh, global peace. And all our activities uh, are towards uh, peace building. So as a, mm -hmm. you can I think, uh, though we have sub team and uh, uh, circle in different group, but uh, all the uh, work together we are putting toward uh, for working and advocating for the peace building. Yes. So yes. keeping this in our thought and keeping your organization also together, let us clap and make one program at least in initial stage, maybe uh, next to a month, as a month of uh, March. And uh, then um, I, other, other thing we can add on. Yeah, Mr. Lloyd, I think first, this, uh, this I'll add my, my, 
Abhyadi. Yeah. And then you can reply for both. Yeah. So, <clears throat> as after sure. how we are, may I? May I proceed? Nikki and Lloyd? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Actually, what I feel is this, that uh, uh, no doubt uh, as, as far as today's technology is concerned and your motive is, according to SDGs, where the difference between the developed world and the less developed world, those who are having and those who are have not, you are trying to create uh, a relationship and as well as some community building in which those who are having the learning, those who are uh, who know the technology and uh, through the technology, and you can take them on one board where they can sit together and they can move uh, towards the betterment. What is the motive of GPLT as as well? What what we believe that GPLT also do wherever there are opportunities in which we can create that atmosphere in which people got good uh, living and they can have a peaceful atmosphere. So what I feel is this, as you said, you should decide and you should tell us what is your program, uh, apart from uh, my brother, as he said, that <clears throat> whatever you feel like the first uh, program which you want to tell us or discuss with us, which is your success story or whatever you are going to start with. And uh, whenever you want to, uh, I, I personally feel with the permission of the board and our chairperson that uh, we allow you to uh, have you on board and give us uh, the, the right direction in which we can also be the part of this uh, uh, unique idea. And as well as, as you said, you are there for the last uh, many years. And especially while talking about this Five Point Youth Foundation, so that speaks that you are talking about the youth, which uh, is uh, uh, right now the problem for all over the world that uh, we, we don't have the opportunities uh, in which our youth can get uh, their bread and butter. So, and, and secondly, as being an entrepreneur, having an experience of four decade plus. So as you said, yes, we need uh, some, some, some sitting and your this tea, uh, initiative or uh, th that speaks loudly that we are talking about business to business and people to people settings in which they can talk their ideas, whatever their experiences, their resources, one is lacking, one is having more. So uh, my humble request is this, that better would be that I will tell you something, you should come up with your success story or with your idea and we should follow you. Thank you very much, my brother. Thank you, thank you. So uh, to answer uh, to answer both of you, um, so we have been we have this in, this engagement process. So um, sort of the to if you haven't, I, I encourage everybody to to attend one of our IGU summits, the Indigenous Global Unity Summits on on Thursday, and you'll 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 see the whole scope. Like I said, the 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 presentation now is more than an hour to just to introduce what we're doing. Um, there's a lot of components to it. So the idea of what we're doing, so we are we are establishing learning infrastructure. So the learning infrastructure is what we call the unity gardens. So the unity gardens are actually a garden, a forest, so a, 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 a garden uh, classroom, a forest classroom, a kitchen classroom, we call it a, a a uh, CSV garden, a victory forest, a climate smart kitchen, um, a uh, what's called a wheel of life farm, so a farm school, uh, and the final one is called a uh, spark learning center, which is actually like a greenhouse, which will be a classroom. It'll be basically a, a, a classroom in a greenhouse. And we wanna establish those as businesses within the community that are shared by all of the learning institutions in those communities. So from, from high schools to universities, to colleges, to even, even daycares and public schools can use this community center basically as a learning center for the whole community um, to learn about what we call climate smart food to learn about growing this climate smart food, processing it, cooking it, every, all these life skills 
will be taught within these learning centers, what we call the unity unity classrooms or the 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 uh, unity gardens, as we call them. They're not all gardens, but they that's just a name we use. Um, so the unity gardens classroom will will also be connected to high speed internet. So we work with an organization called the Foundation for Building Sustainable Communities here in Canada. They deliver the, those CSV gardens and Victory Forests as the solutions. So they're, they're solution provider to two of the solutions. So we work with solution for these our solutions, somebody else's solutions. So these, these unity gardens are intended to teach the entrepreneurs entrepreneurship within the context of these gardens, the, the unity gardens as we call them, but they're not all gardens. So they're like garden, forest, kitchen, um, farms, but they're demonstration farms, they're demonstration forests. So we have a, a food forest, we have a, a food garden. It's not an ornamental garden, it's a food garden, teaching skills to all ages within the community uh, in partnership with the schools, with whether it's universities, colleges or whatever level. Um, and those are internet connected and everybody who's an entrepreneur in the community, actually all the members of the community uh, who are part, who are, who are uh, members of the schools. So the students can also get on this virtual collaborative network to learn okay. virtually. So this is the program we're developing. Um, the specifics on the event that we would like to do actually is in about two weeks. Um, so there is an event coming up um, called the, the uh, SDSN Canada. So SDSN is actually the Sustainable Development Solutions Network Canada. Uh, and I can put into the chat um, information about that. So I'm gonna just get the chat open here. So SDSN Canada, so the Sustainable Development Solutions Network Canada, I put the link there, uh, is developing this SD, SDG research agenda for Canada. Um, so they have an event coming up that starts actually, uh, let me see. So SDSN Canada, they have an event called T Together Ensemble Canada's National Conference on the SDGs that's coming up. It starts on February 2nd. We, the Global Unity Network have been offered to a side event on March 4th, which is this coming Friday or next, the following Friday. So actually it's a little less, less than, than, uh, than two weeks, I guess, from now. Okay, um, sorry, Lloyd, I just, uh, we've, we've <laughs> only got a few minutes left. So in summary, yeah. What's very important, I need to explain to you that Global Peace Let's Talk is very focused on uh, doing things. So mm -hmm. when, we, when we accept a project, then we like to see it through and roll it out. So Senator has said that uh, he's, he sees a link on a way that he can support from his side. And Dr. Chayanti has come up with a suggestion to hold an open event with you and uh, and the team that he can put together. So, so basically you're sitting with two ideas from Senator and from uh, Dr. Janta. So I think uh, the suggestion is to send us now an email to this group and to say exactly what project is there specifically that uh, can be initiated as a kickoff, one project. Mm -hmm. The one project. <laughs> and, then, and then our Senator and Dr. Janta will have a look at that and roll it out. You see, the difference with Global Peace Led Talk is once we partner, we want to roll it out. We don't want to just talk about it. We want to actually roll it out. Mm -hmm. And that's what Senator was telling you. And that's also Dr. Janta was saying, what is the one project? Let's start with one thing so we can roll it out. And then we measure the success of it and see if it's good, if it's strong. Then we share that 
because we've got people across the world that are members of Global Peace and all of them are working on projects. So if it works, the rollout, then we share that project with the other, other people to say, okay, this is uh, the project, build it out, these are the results, and then it comes together. So I think that's maybe the difference with Global Peace. We, we really don't just talk, we want an active project in collaboration that we can roll out. Mm -hmm. Because, and it's a simple philosophy, what is measured is done if what is done can be measured. So if you say this is the one project I feel that you can start with now, and yeah. then our senator, who's a very active senator and who's extremely involved in the digital world, will find the link to that. And Dr. Jayanti will then set up the event between you and Global Peace Let Talk. And then we roll it out. So, the, so in, in our summary now, I should say, give us one event that we can roll out and see what are the results of that. And maybe we can then share it across the countries with our members. So that's, that's sort of the summary now. Okay, so I, I, again, um, I'm going to, I'm putting into the chat right now, I'm reading, oh, I'm going to read what I'm going to put in the chat, but basically the one event we can do is on March 4th um, as a pilot, because we've never done it before. Let's yes. see what we can do. So this, this SDSN network has this event coming up on March, March 2nd. We've been offered a side event on March 4th. Uh, their event is called the, the, um, 2022 Together Ensemble National Conference on the SDGs in Canada, hosted by SDSN Canada. My suggestion was to undertake to do the very first Tea Diplomacy Initiative event, this virtual discussion um, between the members of SDSN Canada, so the participants in their event, and our members of the Global Unity Network. Basically, our members are the marginalized people in these communities in places like Africa and Pakistan and India and all around the world that we're building this network of grassroots local people who need assistance. To, so these high level people that attend the SDSN Canada event can have conversations with the people in the grassroots communities in, at the grassroots level that are yeah. the recipients of the, the So this is, this is the idea and I'm just putting into the chat now um, my, my initial suggestion to, to see if we can get something, our very first uh, crack at this on, on March 4th, um, to do- no, yeah, I, I, Like, like uh, I, I have gone through this four, four initiative, particularly uh, I, I, even all the board members are there, but I will go for the first one because uh, the education and training for the sustainable development goal. If we can start that one, it will be good. And up as a first initiative, uh, I mean, uh, that, that will be good. I mean, other things are there, but uh, for, for my side, this can be the first initiative. We go for that. Yeah, well, this, this is what I'm saying. Right? Look, yeah, but obviously looking for other board member view, but my personal view is that uh, we can go ahead with the first one and how that university and uh, uh, your organization and GPLT can link together for the uh, uh, I mean sustainable development uh, network in Canada, and then we can go uh, move ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So SD SDSN, the Sustainable Development Solutions Network, has been around for ten years. Uh, they've been they've been around. They, that was I forget what his name was in 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 the U.S. that started this network. So just a couple of years ago, the University of Waterloo, again, I put the link, um, became Canada's uh, university for the Sustainable Development Solutions Network. They're actually not that far. They're like an hour from where I live, right? University of Waterloo. I know some people there. Uh, I was working with the biochar initiatives before, and, and there's some research that re researchers there that I knew. Uh, so University of Waterloo is like the hub of sustainable development solutions research in Canada. They, they are managing the Canadian network of research institutions across the country. We want to partner with them because 
we want to partner with all the educational institutions to deliver these. Sorry, Lloyd, so will you be able to connect us to that link then? I think uh, I'm going to hand this over to <laughs> Dr. Jahanta, who will take on this project. It's fallen right in his lap now. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, so Dr. Jahanta. That's Jahanta's. a good thing. Yeah, with Senator. Yeah, so I, what I can Senator. do, um, if this if if this is going forward, um, there there's a, a particular gentleman uh, that did offer the side event, and I actually have not had a chance to confirm with him yet. Okay. But we are going to do this because this is this conversation was supposed to take place, I think, at least a week ago. Uh, I've been itching to get back to him. So that the one thing I need to do is send a send a message to this gentleman. Uh, let's see, send. Um, uh, you so can go a, ahead with that. Yeah, uh, there's a gentleman. His name is John yeah. Beal. He's the manager of the Sustainable Development Solutions Network Canada. He's the okay. one that offered this side event to us. But I've been uh, sort of wanting to get back to him, and I haven't yet. Uh, so I need to get back to him today. I'm just putting the name. Uh, so he offered this side event to us. He said, if you can come up with something, um, we can host it or you can have your side event. We can host it. Uh, yeah, so yeah. if you can say, oh, yeah. we're working together with, with uh, our, our partner is um, Global Peace, let's talk. We wanna do this key diplomacy virtual event with your members yes. of SDSN Canada during this conference. So we just basically invite their members to come out to our virtual Zoom event with the members of the Global Unity Network and say, we're gonna have these virtual discussions one-on-one uh, -on -one with maybe high level people like ambassadors or whatever, whoever is attending the SDSN Canada event. I don't know who okay. they're, who's gonna show up, but they're gonna maybe recommend some people to take part in this. Wonderful. But I can connect you with John Beal uh, yeah, through an email yeah. and then we can set up maybe a, a Zoom call with them and say, okay, what, what do you, what would you, how can we promote this among your membership um, as you're so rolling that can the be, conference? Uh, this can be the first initiative. We can go ahead with that. Uh, even the uh, training and uh, capacity building or training on this uh, sustainable development goal. Uh, in, in person, uh, I used to teach on uh, localization of SDG and also uh, I'm a principal instructor for uh, UN SDG Academy in India. So that will be good how uh, I can merge my uh, individual thing and GPLT and with this network. So we'll yeah. be very much interested to hold that uh, GPLT will be part uh, and uh, how we can uh, involve with Canadian uh, research institutes that would be wonderful if you can uh, initiate that thing. Yeah, so we are we are planning, we want to create a national network in Canada of these, part, a national network of these Unity Garden classrooms as well in all our local communities too, uh, connected with Fantastic. the universities, the colleges, the high schools, the public schools, the grade schools, whatever, uh, the pri private schools too, right? They can, everybody can yeah. be involved right? um, in educating about the solutions to achieving the global goals. So this is the idea, these learning Thank centers. Thank you, awesome. Here we go, we've got a project and we've got, we've got the leadership of the project. So that's Global Peace. We've also got Marta here, who's from Argentina. And Marta uh, is a very strong person on education. So we'll, Dr. Dianti and Senator will find a way to build in the whole project for us, I'm sure. So, Lloyd, thank you very much. I would like Managay to round off the meeting for us, <laughs> and then we can uh, let Senator add his bits. Managay? Thank you, Nikki. Um, Lloyd, first of all, thank you for uh, presenting to us the tea diplomacy really definitely threw a different light on for me because 
there's so much that we can gain and give us the exposure that we so need as Global Peace Let's Talk. We are very young in the sector and we'd like to partner and form these strong alliances with you. And the project sounds wonderful. Um, I, I think Dr. Janta and uh, Senator um, will really do justice to this project. Um, and the fact that, you know, you would use um, us as hosts to some of your um, uh, webinars and meetings really, really does go well for us. So thank you so much. And from the board, thank you for your input, Senator and Dr. Danta. Thank you so much. I think we really are going to get the global recognition that we so deservedly deserve. And um, Senator, it's all up to you now. You can have the last word. Thank you, everybody. You're muted. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, um, especially our chairperson and uh, our today's uh, honorable guest. Really, you have enlightened us uh, what my motive is to be the part of this organization, and especially under the command of our chairperson, that we would love to use the technology and to get the benefit for everyone. Because what I learned in just in the last two years, and I become the first digital senator of the world, and uh, I, my IPO is also registered now. Uh, what what my the next life uh, motive is just to do something for the others, to buy realize by letting them realize the value of technology, the use of technology. The more we use the more we tell the people that coming word, as you said about the metaverse, yes, we are also, I'm also working on NFT, that uh, how we can start the NFTs. And uh, I have given a lot many proposal to my government and inshallah with working with you and your organization, as we are on the same track, we will move ahead. And uh, one thing my sister said, uh, that uh, we are uh, a, a new organization and uh, recently started just a few months back, one year plus. So we would love to uh, make join hands with the those organizations who do be working for the same pattern and for the same mission. So we, we are with you. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you. Thank you. So our philosophy, actually, we, we're, we're, we follow the sustainable development goals. And there are six sort of uh, pillars uh, one of our pillars is this concept of LNOB, leave no one behind. Yes. So we, we target what we call the least developed countries, communities, and economies, meaning we're not just looking at sort of the World Bank LDCs. We're looking at countries, communities locally, and economies, meaning that, that like, for instance, the indigenous communities of a certain, a certain place. Um, which are, they've got their own economy. Uh, so it's not, just, it's not just about looking at countries. Um, uh, so for instance, in South Africa, South Africa is considered a G20 country, yet there are communities in Africa that are extremely poor uh, and extremely marginalized. So we're going to go into those communities, even in South Africa, which is considered a G20 uh, advanced country. Um, so they're, they're, the, the other thing is that uh, we are looking at this uh, development project um, from the point of view of, uh, I, was, I almost forgot what I was gonna say, but you, when, you, you, when you were saying it earlier, um, it's from the point of view of uplifting, helping people to uplift themselves, to lift themselves out of poverty. Um, so we don't go into these communities to do it for them. We, we empower them with the tools. Those digital tools are one of the most important tools, but it's also the hands-on, the gardens. We want to help them to build those gardens themselves, to gain those skills, to how do you, how do you create a food forest? How do you create a climate smart kitchen? How do you create yeah. this regenerative farm? We're going to educate them using the digital tools so they can do it for themselves and gain those those practical skills, the hands-on skills and learning 
uh, how to lift themselves out of poverty. So we're yeah. kind of flipping the head on, on the colonialism. Uh, yes, it's an anti-colonial, yeah, it's an anti-colonial endeavor mm. in the sense that we're not going in there to do it for them. We're gonna uh, empower them to do it for themselves. Because I follow so the Cree, um, the Cree uh, development, a friend of mine, uh, Jill Shunard, she is really high up um, with upskilling the Cree uh, people of Canada. Mm -hmm. So we share a lot of um, ideas and um, I know that's on the forefront in, in Canada to upskill the Cree people. So, and I must share our motto for Global Peace, Let's Talk. It's each one teach one. So that's what we have. And uh, we'd like to take that through with all our, uh, uh, you know, um, webinars or uh, meetings with you. Thank you so much, Lloyd. Yeah, so we, we, we have, we don't use those words. Those are your words, obviously, but, yeah. but the idea of train the trainer, uh, yeah. I think it's been around for quite a while as well. <laughs> And, and I, what I've found, especially, yeah. is I'm learning so much from these other people in these marginalized communities. I'm learning more than I ever really realized I would learn uh, from the people in these communities. Uh, it's been such an incredible learning experience for me. Uh, oh, you're going to learn a lot. You learn a lot from our members also. Um, <laughs> I'm copying it. I just want to quickly. There's Janice. Janice, thank you for being here. I'm so happy you're here. And um, yeah, I see some of them have gone. And also to uh, Charles and Janine from Communication Department. Thank you to everybody. Lloyd, we're going to talk soon and you'll connect. We'll make a group for you and Senator and, um, and for Dr. Chanti so that the project can go ahead. Thank you very much. Nice well, we to have you with us. We do have the existing the existing tea diplomacy initiative WhatsApp chat group. I see. Um, I'll add right? them. I'll yeah. add them. So that's yeah. why I created the chat group was to have this okay. discussion. So uh, Dr. Jahanti is already a member, I believe. Um, yeah, so we is. can add whoever else you want to. I believe you are a manager of the group as well. Um, yeah. But this Thank this you. is this is how we can move forward. I think in in having these these discussions okay. to really connect uh, the grassroots people to, to awesome. these, uh, networks. Nikki, ask so, thank you, everybody. Nikki, please ask anybody else from the meet, uh, with our the here board, anybody wants to ask any question or anything for clarification, please. Okay. Any questions? Okay. No question, good question. We need a picture. Who's going to do a photo? I can, I can, Who's going to do a photo? Yeah, I can. I can make it. I can make it. I already have. Uh, and uh, one more thing for, for the information, yeah. I'll put it uh, the link uh, on uh, our this uh, WhatsApp group. Anybody wants, they can get the all this conversation uh, on our uh, Facebook page and as well as on our YouTube channel. So okay, wonderful. Yes. <laughs> so you can just uh, click the uh, button. The one button is that uh, press a uh, screen. No need to take photograph. No, yeah. but the problem is this. <laughs> I, I am using Mac, which is the new one. Oh, but, but it, it will be know. useful. Will, and uh, There is this <laughs> new one button in it. That is on my the previous one. Yes, yes. I was having, so one button. But I, but, but I have all the recorded one, which I'll put on the YouTube. Anybody wants to? Okay. So. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Our, our senator is always in the pictorial mood. So, <laughs> so far, so nice. <laughs> thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Family. Yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> Okay.